So let me thank the, the organizers for the invitation. And uh, well, my topic is try to give a description of infinitesim infinitesimal description of multiplicative Dirac structures. Dirac stru structures was studied by Christian Ortiz in their PhD. And well, they give some, some results about them and the idea is now to study infinitesimally. So first of all, let me introduce what is drug structure. For that, we need what is a, a BB groupoid that was already defined in the previous talk. So we must think that a BB groupoid is, or BB algebra is just a Lie groupoid, Lie algebra in the category of vector bundles. And we can think that they are squares where one thing is a vector bundle and the other one is a groupoid. But other thing that we can also thought is that a BB groupoid is just a groupoid endowed with a vector field when this with a multiplicative vector field that is projectable. And this vector field is just the Euler vector field of the uh, vector bundle. No. So the main examples are the tangent groupoid that Given a groupoid, we just give the tangent of all structural maps, and we get another groupoid. And the Lie algebra of the BB groupoid is just the tangent algebra. As dual of the tangent, we have the cotangent. And well, this is, I believe that all of you know what is the cotangent BB groupoid, but in some sense, we have a, a, a dual groupoid just given by, by the core. Given a BB groupoid, we have a core. And if we take the dual of the vector bundle, now we obtain a new groupoid over the core, on, over the dual of the core. And this is the cotangent. And now, when we have a, two BB groupoids over the same base, we just could take the sum. And in that case, we obtain the generalized tangent groupoid or BB groupoid. So one important thing of this generalized tangent is that it has more structure than a, just a BB groupoid. Here, probably already you know that the generalized tangent of a given manifold have the structure of current algebra. And this is just codified, well, first using the pairing between the vector band, the tangent, and the dual, the usual pairing. And now we have a current bracket that one must thought that in the first entry is just the usual Lie bracket of vector fields. And we add the action of vector fields on covectors. And well, we deform it using the differential and this deformation is, well, what is giving us the interesting things of the current bracket. And also the fact that this is not just uh, the, Lie the, the action of the Lie algebra of the tangent with the covectors. If we are deforming, this is not a, a Lie bracket, a usual Lie bracket but have interesting properties, as we could see. Then, we could define a Dirac structure on the generalized tangent, just a sub-bundle that, first of all, is Lagrangian with, with respect to the canonical pairing, and second, is involutive for the current bracket. And, well, why these Dirac structures are interesting? For that, just let me tell that if now our base is a groupoid, we call the a multiplicative drug structure of a drug structure on our groupoid. That is also a subgroupoid. So examples of that, we could talk after that. But so when we have a, a Poisson a groupoid that is just a a Poisson manifold that is a groupoid endowed with a multiplicative uh, by vector, and the Poisson equation is here. 
So we could define a, drug, a multiplicative drug structure just given the graph. And now we have a two form that is also multiplicative and is closed. So we have, uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't put it the, 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 the non-degeneracy condition, but if we also add the non-degeneracy condition, we have a symplectic groupoid. But these things, I don't know if they have a name. The, the natural name is presymplectic, but presymplectic was also used for other things. So the graph of a two form is also a, a multiplicative drug structure. So if I explain it, given a, a groupoid, now we have the Lie algebraoid, and well, what we could think is that if the multiplicative uh, two form think as a morphism, then the fact that this multiplicative is just the same as saying that the, this map here is a, more, a groupoid morphism. So we can apply the, the Lie factor to that morphism, and we obtain a Lie algebra morphism that is also BB, no? respects the underlying vector bundle structure. So what is these elements that have here? And this is just an IM Dirac structure that is a Dirac structure on the generalized tangent of our algebraoid that is also uh, a BB algebraoid. So we must think that we have And a square like that, that is our BB algebra. And inside them, we have, let me use the same notation, uh, E over N. We have a sub bundle that is on one side, we have a algebraic structure, and on the other side, we have our current structure, or, or just in that case, is the same as saying that it's Dirac, because we are taking Lagrangian. So we have two compatible structures, and the important thing is that one is in one side and the other is in the other side. So how they match together, and well, that's the, really the problem. So what's probably but by your teeth, the, well, the obvious thing, no? That if you have a multiplicative drug structure, that is a graph, that, that is just a, a sub-bundle of this in the, in the global sense, no? For our groupoid here. So what you could do is just take your leaf hunter and what you obtain here is something that is BB algebra. The only thing that you must prove is that it's also preserved by the Dirac structure is also preserved. So it's involutive for the current bracket. And this was proved by, by Ortiz of the thesis. So what is left to the reader? What, why, why this is not the best answer? Well, because it's know it since Mackenzie and Shu that when you have a Poisson groupoid, then your Lie algebra inner reach a differential that is compatible with your bracket and this a differential. No? So what we have is a Lie algebra. And moreover, if the group is so simply connected, then there is an equivalence. So the question is, easy. what is the relation between this differential and this Dirac structure 
this infinitesimal drug structure that we obtain. And well, the answer, it's pretty more obvious, is that these are, well, let me say, these BB algebras are just vector, forget it about the anchor and about the bracket, and this is a vector bundle in the category of vector bundles. So they have two important, we have an square, no? This D, E, F, M. So we can think that, for example, for this vector bundle structure, we have sections of the vector bundle D over E. Sections are like splittings here, no? So we can think that these maps are also vector bundles. So we obtain a new type of sections or that are called the linear sections. And the other thing is sections that are just arising for the kernel that is inside here. So we have two types distinguish sections given a, the core sections, given a double vector bundle. And the fact is that it's enough to know what is happening on core and linear sections to characterize a morphism between the identity. Here, we have a morphism between double vector bundles that is between the identities, so this morphism is completely characterized for sending the core sections into the core sections and the linear sections into linear sections. And if we look for that in, in this uh, setting, what we obtain is that delta zero is between the core sections and delta one is just between the, the linear sections. In fact, this map that we obtain here is just, well, what we have a, a, diff a first order differential operator we could leave to the jet space, of, to the first jet of our bundle, but if we just remember that we have a vector bundle here, we could take the first order differential operator associated to it. And this is the answer. And also for multiplicative two forms was do it by, I don't know, many authors, for example, Bustin and Cabrera or Bustin and Tiago, uh, that multiplicative two forms are characterized by two maps satisfying some equations, probably, I don't know, easy or difficult or arbitrary, but is that what is satisfied? And <laughs> the fact that, well, the fact that if we have a source simply connected multiplicative groupoid, we obtain a corresponding between these pairs of morphemes. And, and well, the integrability condition that is d omega equals zero is just encoded in the second map being equal to zero. So there are two questions. Here. One is, what is the relation between that delta and these two maps, mu and nu? And in general, given any drug, multiplicative drug structure or infinitesimally multiplicative drug structure, we have a better characterization of it. And well, the, the answer is that we already have it. But in order to do that, we need some machinery or some different approach. So let me introduce what is a graded manifold. It's just a pair that is a, a usual manifold and a ringed space, where our shift of we have uh, well, it's a manifold with a, a shift, so it's a ringed space, and our shift is a graded algebra shift, and we have a local condition for that shift to be a graded manifold. And the local condition is just that. At the level zero, we have usual functions of your manifold, and the higher, mani and the higher functions are just given by symmetric powers of some vector bundles. 
This symmetric is great this symmetric. So, for example, in degree one, is anti-commutative, uh, is skew symmetric, and in higher degrees are symmetric. So, let me give some examples. If we consider, for example, any manifold, and we take differential forms on that manifold as a shift, this is a graded shift that is satisfying that, and uh, we denote it by the tangent bundle shifted by one of n because we can do it this construction. In general, for any vector bundle, we could take just the stereo algebra of of the of the sections of that <coughs> vector of the dual of that vector bundle, and we denote it by by one. That is a graded manifold. Why this is normal? So let me say, given a vector bundle on a manifold, we could think that the functions on that vector bundle, inside of them, we have a, a graded subalgebra that is the homogeneous element living there. That is just, if we think that our vector bundle is just a manifold with a, the Euler vector field, so a function is of degree p if just satisfy p here, lambda p of f. Then these elements here are just given by the symmetric powers of the sections of the dual. So this is an algebra that is completely symmetric. And if we want something that is skew symmetric, we just replace the symmetric by, by the wedge. And we obtain the same. So here we have the symmetric power of the sections of the E dual. And now we have the skew symmetric powers of the sections of E dual. So we must think that on degree one, the degree one manifolds are exactly vector bundles. We have a phantom between the vector category and the degree one manifolds. But we have, in general, more things that, for example, given any manifold of degree one, we can take the tangent of that shifted by one, and this is a degree two manifold that is not trivial. And well, the important result for this talk is that degree two manifolds could be characterized with pairs of vector bundles and, uh, and the exact sequence of vector bundles. And the way that you pass from one to the other is just consider the, the, mani the base of the, our vector bundles, and after that, take it the exterior power of the element that puts in degree one, and the symmetric powers of the element that puts in degree two, and now identify them using this exact sequence. I don't know if it's clear for everyone, but, uh, and uh, well, wh what is the relation of that kind of construction with what we have is that theorem given by Fernando del Carpio and Madeleine Jot that there is an, e an equivalence of categories between involutive double vector bundles at degree two manifolds. So what is an involutive double vector bundle? It's just a, vector, a double vector bundle, D, where the two sides are equal and we have a morphism, an endomorphism J of the double vector bundle that intertwines the two sides. So we could think that the, we, that the, inf, L, that the functions on our total space of the double vector bundle have a double degree PQ of day 
given by homogeneous on that direction and homogeneous on the other direction. But now we have the two directions that are equal. And uh, the J are just intertwining them. So what we ca could have is just take the, the total degree, no? the shift that on degree K is just the sum of flip P plus Q equal K of D. And morally, this is equal to that one, but just what we are taking is the full skew symmetrization of that thing. So the other important result here is that this double vector is that, well, in general, double vector bundles have a non-trivial thing that is the dualization theory. Given any double vector bundle, you can take a dual over, over one vector bundle structure or the dual over the second vector bundle structure. Then you have two duals. So the fact that now the, the sides are equal, it's telling you that, in fact, these involutive double vector bundles just have one dual. And the theorem is that given an involutive double vector bundle, the dual of that is a metric double vector bundle. It is, we have a, here we have a pairing. So we are in that situation. This is a double vector bundle that we have a metric here. So we are in the involutive case. The dual of that double vector bundle is an involutive double vector bundle. So it corresponds to a degree two manifold. And well, let me say something about uh, more machinery in, in graded manifolds that is just the definition of a Q-manifold. A Q-manifold is just a graded manifold endowed with a degree one derivation of that shift that it uh, squares to zero. And we must think that is just a, a differential or sometimes it's called it a homological vector field on our manifold. So what are examples of that are just, for example, this manifold, this degree one manifold, and the way with the RAM differential, this is a Q manifold of degree one, or in general, given any vector in a, any degree one manifold, if we have also, it is here, it's missing, shifted by one. This degree two manifold is also a Q manifold. And the other thing is, what is a Poisson manifold or P-manifold of? So given a manifold of degree n, we endow it with a Poisson bracket of degree minus n that is just satisfying a graded skew symmetric, graded Jacobi, and graded Leibniz. So these graded things, you just must think that when you have two elements and you permute it then, appear as seen depending on the gradient of that element. That's the fact. So what are examples of these Poisson manifolds? Are, for example, the cotangent bundle shifted by one with the Scouton bracket. So multi-vector fields have the Scouton bracket that have degree minus one, and this is exactly a Poisson bracket for graded manifolds. Or in general, given any Lie algebra, the dual of the Lie algebra. So in, in that analogy, we know that given any Lie algebra here, this manifold is a, a linear Poisson manifold. So the functions on that manifold must generate a Poisson bracket. And well, the fact is that this Poisson bracket is 
not saying is that algebra is symmetric or, or is Q-symmetric. And so we can define a Poisson bracket also for the graded manifold that is given by the tangent bundle. So this is other example and is really important for us. So what we can do now, we can put it together, the two structures, and we obtain a PQ manifold. That is just a graded manifold and with, with a Poisson structure and with a vector field that the vector field is Poisson. So the important result is that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between degree two PQ manifolds and LA current algebra. So this object here is a particular case of an LA current algebra. And uh, why, w what is the surprising part of the, of the Liebland result and what is the expected part? Well, the expected part is that once you have a BB algebra, the dual of a BB algebra inherits a Poisson structure. So this Poisson structure is of degree minus one, minus one. So morally, as we are taking the dual of that BB algebra, and we are taking the total degree of that algebra, and we have one a Poisson structure that is of degree minus one, minus one, it is not surprising that did this shift in a reach also at degree minus two Poisson bracket. And this is the fact that this is a P manifold. The surprising fact is that the current structure given here can be codified in a, in a vector field that is homological for that manifold. And as far as I know, the, the dual double vector bundle of that is not in reach any classical thing as well as a vector bundle. The, the fact is that we need exactly that this is Q symmetric to could define properly the Q. And this is well this is the surprising fact, I believe. So now in, uh, we decided to, we chose, uh, we just change our structure here to a degree two manifold that is Poisson and that is half a Q. And the question is, what is an IM and infinitesimal multiplicative drug structure on that in terms of this degree two manifold? With, with a Poisson bracket and with a Q. So the correspondence is that some manifolds here are just Lagrangian BB subbundles of that. So we are in the right direction. Coisotropic sum manifolds corresponds with BB subalgebra and coisotropic sum manifolds with Q tangent to it to IM drug structure, to infinitesimally multiplicative drug structure. Also, the coisotropic part is not something is not new because when we have a subalgebra of a Lie algebra, when we dualize and we take the annihilator, this is a coisotropic submanifold of this Poisson manifold. Then the only thing that is new is that the Q is tangent to the submanifold corresponds to infinitesimal multiplicative drag. IM drug structures. So now the process is try to use the second characterization that we have for, uh, for degree two manifolds in terms of bursting, cataneo, and meta, and uh, try to deduce what we obtain in uh, for a, a infinitesimal IM drug structure. And the fact is that the two bundles that appears for the description are first, just this, the dual of the side bundle. And the second bundle is, well, this one. <laughs> that 
if you prefer, is just to linear sections in that double vector bundle. But not all the linear sections, just the linear sections that preserve the pairing. So what the Poisson structure give in terms of these two brackets? Well, give first a degenerate metric on the first, that is just taking the anchor of your element here and the pairing with the usual pairing on, on, of covectors. A Lie algebraic structure here that is just, well, the, the lift of the Lie algebra structure on A to the first jet, the actions with the Scouton bracket of the first jet here, the actions of this using the, the anchor and the Scouton bracket here, and we have a, a term between that and that using the anchor. So it's like a action groupoid, but we have that term that is perturbing this action groupoid. And uh, after that, uh, we need an action of that groupoid, of that Lie algebraid on that vector bundle. That is just, well, this acts on A by adjoint operation. This acts on A by the, well, it's pretty the same. And, well, the, the following fact is that the relevant one is that the Q structure is given just by three maps. One, the first one is just the Durham differential. The second one is the Durand differential here plus the classical Spencer operator. And the third one is just, uh, well, the extension of both to the complex. So the first theorem is just, uh, I am drug structure is two vector bundles, two subvector bundles that the first condition is giving you that, in fact, we have a, a BB subbundle. Then two, three, and four is just saying you that is Poisson, and five, six, and seven is telling you that Q is tangent to it. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's quasotropic. Yeah, inside the Poisson. That's it. And well, that's the condition. So once we, let me say that this have much pretty with the first talk that is, now we have K1 times E1, and this is inside of K2 that is a subalgebra and here we have a K. So we have an exact, an exact sequence of BB algebraids. So what we can do is try to, es to split it, no? or not exactly to split it, but if we consider this extension, now we, this is inside that one that is an exact sequence of vector bundles of Lie algebra also. So we, we could describe this K2 just using K and K1. And well, in order to do that, we need a, a new data that is that map here. And well, we have that conditions that is pretty the same, it's just, to consider this as a sequence or a short of a splitting of that. And well, examples, what we obtain. So if we have the differential that is the Poisson, so the first is that the manifold is the whole manifold. The K1 is just the graph, the graph of, of the delta zero, the the little k here, that is here inside, is the whole algebraid. And now the map is just giving 
by this delta one composed with the first jet. And well, what we can prove is that this satisfies theorem does if and only if this is a lead by algebra, that is, the expected one. The other example is that the two form, and we obtain basically the same. One is the graph of one map, and the other is just using that two maps. And well, this satisfying theorem through is and only if this two form is close. And well, we have also a big picture that is just this manifold is a Poisson manifold in degree two. So using this catania felder approach, we could ask if this integrates to a symplectic manifold, and we have a groupoid, and the answer is yes. And this is just, well, the big picture, the classical picture. We have this groupoid in, in the double vector bundle category, and this is Poisson, and this is symplectic. It's just the cotangent bundle of the BB groupoid that we already have it. So coisotropic submanifolds integrate to Lagrangian subgroupoids, and this Lagrangian subgroupoids it is corresponds with the multiplicative drug structures of that BB groupoid of our initial BB groupoid. So one remark is that, and the other remark is well, if we take an splitting of that exact sequence, an splitting is just taking a connection. So what we could say about our theorems? So the first thing is that if we think that a Q is something that goes here in that direction, this is Q0, Q, K1, Q, K2, and now if we have an splitting of this A2, this is the wedge of A1 plus A2 two, and he. Now what we can do is just dualize the maps and what we obtain here is an anchor. This is a bracket. This is the differential of the complex. This map here gives a bracket, a tree bracket and these maps here give an action. So what we have is that our Q structure is just a little algebra and is this little algebra given by the bracket on the first, on the degree minus one element, the action of degree minus one on degree minus two, and the three bracket of three elements here with values on degree minus two. And uh, analogously, the Poisson structure, when we decompose this double vector bundle, is just a representation up to homotopy. So what representation? Just the sum of the quad of the adjoint representation with the quadjoint representation. And this is given a connection. So our last theorem is that given a connection, a IM drug structure is just two sub-bundles that K1 is a subalgebra. this is a sub-representation of K, and this is a little subalgebra. And well, I believe that probably this result is in the, in the Madeleine Jodes uh, paper, and well, that's all.